Pro Football Focus's quarterback rankings for all 32 starters is out. And to the surprise of no one, really, Patrick Mahomes is at the top. What may surprise you, the fact that no one is with him using their tiered system, basically Mahomes and everyone else. Question then becomes, what's the gap, say, between one and five? You've got questions. I've got questions. You know who has the answers. Trevor Sikama from Pro Football Focus, NFL analyst, back on the show. Trevor, great to be with you here on this Friday. So, so take me through the Mahomes in his own tier. What kind of conversations either within yourself or some of your peers when you're talking about the list that you guys put out? It's hard to look at Mahomes and what he's been able to do over the last, let's just say, three or four years and look at both his his highs and his lows. And really, it's the highs of his highs and also the highs of his lows that put him in a tier of his own. Right. We went into last year and we went, OK, not the best supporting cast in the world. The Chiefs are vulnerable. What do they do? Oh, they just go back to back and win the Super Bowl. Right. And look, it's not all Mahomes. Obviously, he's surrounded by a great cast and a great coaching staff that really helps him out. But when you're doing these rankings, it would be a disservice to what we have seen from Mahomes and that magic, both with a great supporting cast and maybe not the best that he has had in his career to say, oh, man, yeah, there's somebody who's as close to him or we take him over this player. And if the point of tears is to truly put guys in similar buckets, well, sure, I think that Joe Burrow is capable of beating Patrick Mahomes. And sure, I think Joe, Josh Allen is capable of beating Patrick Mahomes. But they haven't done it, not with that regularity. And the success level that Patrick Mahomes has had to me puts him in a tier of his own when it comes to ranking these quarterbacks. That's why I had to give him the Mahomes tier at the very top of these rankings. Don't think you would get a lot of pushback there. Lamar Jackson in a cluster of guys that you mentioned with Burrow and Allen in tier two. So then what goes into Burrow and Allen and why the Cincy quarterback at three as opposed to the Buffalo one at four? Yeah, these are the guys that I think uh, you know can at times go toe to toe with Patrick Mahomes, which I think is funny that it's a barometer himself, which uh, you know goes into him being in a tier of himself. But look, these are three quarterbacks who I think are absolutely Super Bowl caliber quarterbacks, right? These are guys who I think have either gotten to that point, very close to that point. Really, it's just sort of the ball, you know, bounced the wrong way for Josh Allen to not get there. I think a couple of times over the last three or four years, Lamar Jackson, what he has done is a multi-time MVP now, and so yeah, these guys are again. This is the next tier of players who I. I think it absolutely be major catalysts for why you win a Super Bowl. And so you see, you've seen high levels of success from all three of these guys over the last three years. And to me, it truly separates them from the rest of their peers when it comes to these top four quarterbacks. And of course, lumping those three guys into that one group there. So then the next tier would be postseason caliber quarterbacks there. And there's a conversation to be had about Matthew Stafford and Aaron Rodgers, guys that are not done yet, but they are getting a little long of the tooth there, Trevor. Yeah, and I think that Matthew Stafford absolutely deserves to be as high as he is on this list. And, and that maybe shocks some people. You know, he, he's a little bit ahead of you know guys like Jalen Hurts and guys like C.J. Stroud, Jordan Love. Maybe I guess people would put those guys over Matthew Stafford. But you look at what Stafford was able to do last year, age 35. He was top five in the NFL in big-time throws, which is sort of a metric that we have at PFF to better quantify these big throws that you know don't just go for touchdowns, right? Because everybody likes to say, yeah, touchdowns and interceptions. Well, we have a little bit more context in our stats with big time throws and turnover worthy plays. He was top five in big time throws, which are exactly kind of what you would think. And then turnover worthy plays, again, a, a pretty straightforward word and wording there. He was second only to Dak Prescott in the regular season in those throws. So at age 35, Matthew Stafford, the wisdom and experience that he has, along with some good arm talent still that he's got on him, uh, has to put him in the top 10, in my opinion. So, you know, in sports gambling and fantasy, to talk about sort of like correlated play. So, again, Mahomes by himself. The next tier only has three. The next only has five. This next one is sort of the, what you call what the melting pot of starters, which has <laughs> sort of the biggest buckets. Got Trevor Lawrence, Brock Purdy, and Tua Tonga Vailoa. Take me through kind of where you have these guys and putting them in this particular pot. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's so tough because you get to this point of the quarterback rankings and you go, well, any of these guys could probably beat one another any given week. And that's why it's this big melting pot of starters. I mean, you mentioned three of those guys in there. You know, Jordan Love's in this tier, Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff. I mean, there's just so many quarterbacks that week in and week out can get it done. But those three guys definitely are intriguing within this group because it's hard to differentiate them because they are so, such different quarterbacks and what they do well and maybe what they don't. Trevor Lawrence, I think, is the most talented of those three that you mentioned between him, Brock Purdy, and Tua Tungavailoa, but man, so many turnovers last year for Trevor Lawrence, and he was great at getting the ball, pushing it deep down the field, increasing that average depth of target, but so many turnovers. We know he's got to hone in on those. Brock Purdy, 
as Mr. Irrelevant, maybe would be looked at as the least talented of three, but the most successful, right? The guy that has had the most success and the most efficiency of the group. So, all right, how much do you weigh arm talent versus just the overall success that he has had, albeit in a strong Shanahan system? And then Tua, I mean, nobody has really been able to accumulate more big time throws and a higher passing grade than Tua Tungavailoa in our system over the last couple of years. And you know, you don't want people to remember, you know, passing grade isn't necessarily us saying this is the best quarterback in the NFL, but it is us recognizing how well you do what is asked of you, how much success you have in your job within the context of how you're playing the quarterback position. For Tua, man, in that Mike McDaniel system, he's been lighting it on fire. But of course, with him, when it gets outside of that Mike McDaniel structure, that's when you start to see the mistakes. And so how much do you take that of individually away from him? But that's how I kind of con- that's how I kind of get to the conclusion of those guys in this group and how I'm tearing them looking at their strengths and weaknesses. It's also interesting to see Trevor Lawrence and Tua Tagovailoa going through their contract stuff heading into OTAs uh, in right. camp as well. By the way, staying in tier 4, I wonder how much pushback if any you've gotten with Caleb Williams cuz you've thrusted the rookie quarterback in there at 19, which is the very bottom of this fourth tier. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple ways that you could do these quarterback rankings, right? One of them is you could say, all right, rookies, I'm just going to put them all at the very end of the list. They have not played it down in the NFL yet, but I mean, I'm a draft guy. I can't do that. I'm already, I've been talking about for months about how good this guy is, and I think he goes number one overall for a reason because there's so many teams in the NFL that would take this guy over even who they already have as these entrenched veteran starters. So why would I do a ranking any different than that? So look, Caleb Williams has a lot to prove. Heck, even yesterday, uh, people all over Twitter were talking about how he struggled against the defense in that day, and it's going to be a long winding road for him to realize the top tier talent that he has at the NFL level. But I believe believe that it is there for him. He's got a good offensive line. He's got some good running backs to hand the ball off to. And more importantly, he's got great receivers to throw the ball to. They know they need a potent offense from him, and he is the guy to do it. I think that when I was ranking him, even where he is right now as a rookie, this is the type of success I could see him having as a just, I think, the, the beginning of that second half of, uh, of quarterbacks at the NFL level, even in just his rookie year. So you have Williams ahead of guys like Baker Mayfield and Derek Carr, which is another tier, but we're going to skip that particular tier five and get to tier six lastly before uh, I let you go here because a conversation of speaking of rookie quarterbacks like Drake May Jaden Daniels and then a second year guy in Will Levis take me through sort of the thought process of where you position these guys yeah, so they're all kind of right there, right? They're right at the end of that next generation tier that I labeled there. And the reason why I kind of have, uh, you know, Jaden Daniels and a Drake May a little bit ahead of where I had Will Levis going into this season is because Will Levis last year, and look, this is not all his fault. It was kind of a tough situation in Tennessee. A lot of good, but a lot of bad as well. You know, 16 big time throws, 14 turnover worthy plays. He only had two games that he played last year in which he gained a passing grade above 70. A lot of the rest of it just was not good. But hey, it was a learning year for him. But that's kind of why I have him in this conversation because you look at the momentum that Jaden Daniels has going into this season. You look at, you know, what Drake May could be if he gets a little bit of time to sit behind Jacoby Brissett, right? You know, what could he be when he hits the ground running? These are guys who I, I have them very close in the ranking for a reason but the reason why you know I have Will Levis a little bit lower is just because it was so erratic last year we have to see more consistency and right out of the gate I hope that we are getting more of that over those two rookies that I mentioned here this year great stuff as always Trevor enjoy the holiday weekend my man appreciate it guys anytime